I still think Jamie and I should check outside. No, let's stay together. We're less likely to get caught. I got it, okay. So we're going quietly. Jamie, watch our backs. Okay. Oh, there it is. We no, got no, it. no, Rose. There could be an alarm. Oh, Jamie, check it out. Okay. Um. Uh huh. See. Well done, my little criminals. But you forgot one. Thing. What, Dad? Well, honey, when you took your glove off to pick the lock, you left a fingerprint on the doorknob. I'm sorry, guys. But other than that, you meddling kids did a great job. So like I've been saying throughout this class, if you want to learn criminal science and become great detectives, you need to learn to think like a criminal. <laughs> oh, seriously, Dad. And the goggles, really? Okay. So anyway, follow me back into the other room, and I'm going to show you how to raise the fingerprints off the doorknob using household glue. He chose poorly. <laughs> So the fumes from the glue bind to the oils in the skin. Hey, are we uh, still going out for ice cream after class? Ahem. <clears throat> then once the glue is finished steaming, you can just dust for fingerprints like usual and lift it off with packing tape. And then you could scan the prints into a scanner and put it in Photoshop and enhance the images even more. That's right, Amy. Thanks, Dad. Don't you do this kind of stuff up at the Mount Hideaway facility? Nice try, Rose. You know the work we do up there is classified. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Bradford, for um, leading this club. This forensic science project really makes physics, chemistry, and even government a lot more interesting. You're very welcome, Jamie. You know, with your dad helping to teach business and Bethany's mom helping out with social studies, you kids are getting some really great projects and field trips along with your homeschool curriculum. Raising fingerprints is awesome. I can't wait to go home and do it myself. That's great, Bethany, but be careful and always use your protective equipment. I will. I give up. It just takes a little practice. You know, I forgot how bad I was at baking. Measuring and following directions just really isn't my thing. No, it's not. You're much better with people than you are with pies. I mean, seriously, I have never met anyone that can connect with every single person that she meets. And that's a gift. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you know, um, I love having you home for as long as you want. I think we're gonna need to find you some other jobs. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> oh, I could take the food to the church food pantry. I'd love to catch up with Pastor Nehemiah. I think that's a great idea. Oh, Joy, I'm headed to the church to take some food. Do you wanna come with? No, I'm good. I'm almost done with my ancient history module and I still have to feed the bunnies. Wait. Be right back. Hey, 
Hey, Pastor Nehemiah. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey, Beth. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you, too. So I brought apples and apple butter okay. and peach preserves. Thanks a lot, Beth. This will help the folks out a lot. It's just getting started now. Why don't you put it up on the big TV? Can you do that with a phone? Give me the thing. So here we are at a house I just bought this morning. Now it was scheduled to be demolished. However, the foundation studs and plumbing seem to be in good shape. Yeah, I'm gonna flip a house one of these days. Woman, please, you just like looking at James Wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a cutie. At your age. Plus I got it for a great price since I offered it all in cash. Now there are always risks in uh, taking deals like this one. Um, Cannoli beans, I guess for when you're hungry. But you know, you can also find some real great treasures too. Which, speaking of, uh, shall we check behind door number one? You never know, the owners might leave us a little surprise! Ah! Oh, oh, I, 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 help! Hey, help! Anybody help! Did you hear what happened? No, what's going on? Oh my gosh, I was at the church and people were watching a live stream of Jamie flipping a house. Yes. Mom, seriously, stop. Anyway, um, Jamie opened a closet door and a dead body fell out. What? Yeah. Do they know who it is? No, no, they shut it off after that happened, so I, I don't know any more than that. Yikes, well, what about Jamie? Bethany Shanholds? You need to talk to him. Look, a customer. Hi, can I help you? We're actually closed for this season, but I did just take some fresh pies out of the oven. Actually, I'm, I'm looking for... Grace! Hi. Hi. Mom, this is my friend Grace Biddle from DC. Oh, nice to meet you. You too. Yeah, I didn't know you were in town. I am. I've been here for a little while, actually. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, um, why don't I show you around the shop? Great. What are you doing here? It's nice to see you, too. I've been stationed at Mount Hideaway for the past two weeks. You're working at the classified facility outside my hometown. They reassigned me there right after you took your leave of absence. <laughs> to keep an eye on me? Believe it or not, Beth, it's not all about you. There's actually a growing concern about the town itself. You mean to the facility, right? No. No, I mean to the town itself. But it's a town with a lot of agency employees, so it could be a national security threat. Okay, okay. What kind of a threat are we talking about here? Well, for starters, you know the body that just turned up? That was the town zoning commissioner, Frank Bavier. Did you know him? No, no, not really. Well, he was about to make a pretty big decision about the land adjacent to the facility. So? So, a decision about what they do with the land right next to the facility directly affects our security. And also, we keep hearing chatter about a threat originating from the town itself. In Stevens Mill? You mean like a terrorist attack? We can't tell for sure. Grace, I'm trying to live a quiet life and get to know my hometown again. Yeah. How's that, uh... How's that going for you? Okay, that's not fair. I'm learning new things. Beth, you're the best operative and asset handler I've ever met. And what happened in August wasn't your fault. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I was ordered to put a civilian in harm's way against my better judgment. I know. I know, and we're not gonna go down that road again. I approved your leave for as long as you need. But this is different. Look, you're technically still on leave, so it's your call. Fine. Grace, fine. But I'm not doing it for you 
or for national security. I'm doing it for my town and my family. That's fair. Okay, who do I have for support? Well, uh, that's the thing. The agency's barred from conducting operations on U.S. soil, so you're on your own. This is technically a black op. Okay. So, I'm investigating murder with no official authority, no support, and if it goes south, I'm hung out to dry. Yeah, that sounds about right. Here's the address where they found the body. You can start there. She seems nice. Mom, we need to talk. Honey, I was an intelligence analyst at Mount Hideaway for years. Your dad was always deployed in places he couldn't tell us about. Whatever you need to do, you have my support. Thanks, Mom. So, um, I guess I'll be making the pies from now on. <laughs> Then you make that ridiculous hat look good. Seriously though, Bethany. Uh, you know, my whole world is falling apart, but I still feel like the luckiest guy in the world, you know? Look, Jamie, we're gonna figure out what happened at the warehouse and clear your dad's name. Everyone knows that he wasn't the one who caused the explosion. I just have to keep digging. And I hope that you're the luckiest guy in the world because last time we went fishing, you caught zilch. Zero. Oh, really? Nada. Well, I guess if it's true, I mean. Is that Rose's car? really high last night because of the storm. You, you don't think What was she doing out here? You two were talking last night. What were you talking about? Nothing. I mean, I asked her to help us with the investigation again. But then she got all irrational. Bethany, she said she didn't want any part of this investigation. We agreed we would leave her out of this. I know. She worked at the warehouse before the explosion. I just, I thought... So you pushed her harder? No, that is not what happened. As soon as I brought up the subject, she got really evasive and really defensive. Like she was hiding something. And then she just stormed off! So you just let her go? What was I supposed to do? Well, not that! Amy. Beth. What are you doing here? Well, I know it's an active crime scene, but you know it's technically against regulations. But come on in. <laughs> you already found the boots and gloves. So that's Frank Bavier. Wait, how did you know that already? Oh, right. I didn't know him very well since he was older than us, but I do know that he works for the county and he got a couple of promotions. He didn't live around here, did he? No. And there wasn't any blood, so he was probably killed somewhere else. Interesting. Who's that? Ah! 
crying. Uh, is everything okay in here? Uh, I thought I heard someone talking. No, it's just me <laughs> talking to myself <laughs> and uh, this guy here. Uh, I just want you to know uh, your crime scene is completely secure here. I'm making sure of that. Thanks, Travis. <sighs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to work now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, any chance you'd want to go get a custard or something sometime when you're done here? Oh, thanks, Travis. You know, I've got a, a date with a guy tonight that's probably gonna go pretty late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Travis Mayfield? Yeah, he's got a crush on me. And? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Have you checked out the other rooms yet? No, Travis secured the building, but I haven't searched the rest of the rooms. Let me know if you find anything interesting. Hey, Amy, check this out. That might help. <laughs> it looks like somebody's been living here. Yeah, and pretty recently too. The expiration date on this yogurt is next month. Maybe whoever was camping out here saw who brought the body in. Well, I know you have to bag this all for evidence, but I'm gonna take a look around to see if I can figure out who our mysterious camper is. Sounds like a plan. Beth, I'm so glad you're here. It's just like playing detective when we were kids. You and me and Jamie and... Oh yeah, and Rose. Have you talked to Jamie yet? No. I don't really see a reason to. Um, yeah, I've been avoiding him. We've both moved on. Okay, yeah, I know. <sighs> Hi, Jamie. Yeah, it's been a long time. Um, I'm sorry that I left without saying goodbye. Um, yeah, I'm also sorry that you think that Rose's death was my fault. Um, and I am sorry that I was the worst girlfriend in the world and never returned any of your calls. Um, but I was in a lot of pain at the time and honestly, you were not very understanding. But uh, we can leave that behind us now and, and be adults and have adult conversations. Like, how about that dead guy you found? <sighs> I watched those trucks get loaded yesterday. What do you mean the shipment didn't get there? Right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good, I'll see you soon. Hi, honey. You talking to the dog again? Yeah, he's a good listener. So what's going on? I loaded up two trucks of apples yesterday uh -huh. to go to the cidery up north, and they still haven't arrived. That's weird. Yeah. So, back to you. Talking to the dog. You know, Last time we spoke, he made it pretty clear that he did not want to see me again. Honey, that was years ago. And you were both in a lot of pain. Mom, I know, but things have changed and we've both moved on. And I think I just need to keep it that way. Okay, sweetie. Love you. Love you too. Good luck today. I'll come in a bit later. Okay.
Hey, yeah, no one's here. Come back now. Bye. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who are you and what are you doing? Here? Calm down. I, I heard the guy who lived here died and I just wanted to borrow a few things, maybe stay here a few nights. And you're okay with camping in a dead guy's house? I've stayed in worse. I know every good squatting spot in the county. Okay, so maybe you know the abandoned house on Water Street? The place where they found the body of the guy who owns this house? Nope, never heard of it. Well, maybe you forgot this specific house. Hey, why don't we do this? Let's just drive there right now. I'll pick up food along the way. I know this amazing pancake house. Actually, I'm okay. Thanks for the offer though. I guess you really do owe me one for almost murdering me earlier. Wait, wait, wait. You are so right. Here. Let me write down my number. And if you see anything or hear anything, just let me know. Pancakes are on me. Sure. This is Grace. Hey, Grace, it's Bethany. N this line's secure. I have a computer here that I need hacking into. Are you sure you don't have some tech support guy who can- Not help? only can I not provide tech support, but you cannot call me, okay, at all, ever. I will call you if I have something, but otherwise you're on your own. Thanks, Jane. So, what is it like balancing your veterinarian practice while doing crime scenes? Oh, I'm sure it's not as exciting as what you do, but you know, it actually works out pretty well. You know, Stevens Mill, it's not like there's a big crime wave or anything. Beth? Uh, well, I was going to tell you when I knew a little bit more. Tell me what? The thing is, this could be dangerous. Beth, I am a sworn law enforcement officer. You can read me in. Okay. This has to stay in between us. The people that I work for think that Frank Bavier's death could be connected to some deeper things. Huh. You know, I'm really not surprised. Ever since you left, this town has been changing. I can't put my finger on it, but something is off. Well, you're not the only one who thinks that. But I can't act in my official capacity and I don't have agency resources. <sighs> it's not a problem. We can do this. <laughs> all right, well, now all we need is tech support, somebody with computer and surveillance skills. Again. Not a problem. I got a guy. You got a guy? Well, not like that. Well. Wow. 
Well, well, well. If it isn't the lovely and talented Amy Bradford. Do you have another code for me to crack from our dedicated but antiquated heroes down at the Sheriff's Department? Well, hi, um, Amy. What is Bethany Shanholtz doing here? Do you know who she works for? Mm, Amy, um, this is your computer expert, Hector the Hacker, the guy who writes poems in Klingon and went to the Stevens Mill High School prom dressed as Harry Potter. Radagast the Brown? Look, I'm sure the agency had plenty of stuffy MIT grads, but Hector is great. Just give him a few minutes to warm up. Hector, I don't mean to sound rude, but I kind of need to see what you do. Well, I thought you'd never ask. So, um, is this an official police investigation? Well, it is and it isn't. All you need to know is that you're helping us save the world. Or the town. And you get to be a part of this. I accept joining your party. Okay. Well, Hector, your first assignment is to find us a homeless kid. I figured out who the mysterious camper was from the Fixer Upper. Did you talk to her? Uh, I tried to, but she was too skittish. So I need you to find her. She is about 5'4", she's got short brown hair, kind of boy cut, and um, she's got brown eyes. <laughs> All right, can I find her? <laughs> Does Jamaica have a bobsled team? Hey, enough people say they know they can't believe. Jamaica's got a bobsled team. Mm -mm. people should have known I can't believe I'm gonna find this girl for Bethany. Hey, you people should have known I can't believe I'm doing cool stuff on the First, I would like to thank Reverend Nehemiah McDaniel for allowing us to use this house of worship today. For many years, this house has been a source of hope for my family, as well as the community. As mayor of Stevens Mill, I want to assure everyone that we are doing everything possible to solve this crime. And while we can't comment on an open investigation, we will keep you updated as best we can. Thank you. Yo, thanks for letting me do this little dog and pony show here, man. Of course, Simon, of course. Now, we wouldn't have gotten the zoning and the permits for this food pantry going without you. And as you can see, it's much needed. Looks like a win-win. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, this is Beth Shanholtz. Oh, Tina Shanholtz's daughter. Welcome back home, young lady. My wife brought home one of your mom's pies last week, had dessert for dinner, <laughs> finished it off for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Things must be pretty crazy up at City Hall. You got that right. Any idea why somebody would want to kill the zoning commissioner? Well, yes and no. I mean, zoning battles can get heated, but not like this. Zoning battles? Well, like in any growing town, there's a constant struggle between the past and the future. In Stevens Mill, it's between the farmers and shopkeepers who built the town and the outside corporations who want to come in and use the land for other things. Companies like Omni Millennium. You got a sharp one here, Hammy. Mm -hmm. Frank Bavier was right in the middle of a battle between Walter Brenneman, the banker who works with the farmers, and Omni, who wants the farmland zone commercial. What's Omni Millennium want with a bunch of farmland? I hear they want to put a wind farm on the mountain and fill the valley with warehouses and data centers. Neither of which provide many jobs for the town. Very impressive, young lady. Mr. Mayor? It's time for you to go to your next appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Emmy, I'll see you soon. Okay.
Yep. A lot of things have changed since the last time you and your friends hung out here. A lot more homeschoolers are using the facility. One of the parents here is teaching robotics. <laughs> yeah. And James has jumped in to teach financial literacy and social media marketing. Hmm. Well, it feels like the whole town's changed. But yeah. that part's kind of cool. You gotta go, but stick around if you want to. Okay. All right. Bethany? Jamie! I actually go by James now. Um, it's more professional. Uh, yeah, no, that sounds more mature and responsible. I'm supposed to establish my brand, you know, um, with maturity and uh, sophistication. <laughs> right. Yeah. Jamie, I think we need one more of these games. Oh, hi. Who's this? Hi, I'm Bethany Shanholt. Oh my goodness! So great to meet you, I'm Allison Branneman. It's so nice to meet you too. So do you volunteer at the church here too? Uh, yes, actually I um, bring food from our family orchard. That's so sweet. Well, James and I teach a class for the kids about finances and accounting, since you know, he's a big real estate mogul. And well, my daddy owns a bank. Wow, well that is, that is so charitable. Okay, well, it was so nice to meet you, um, and uh, great to see you again, uh, James. Well, Bethany, wait, you just got back in town. Why don't you come over tonight, join James and I for some hot cocoa? That is such a great idea, but I'm actually having dinner tonight with my mother, so I can't make it. Maybe another time. Sure. Okay. Oh, bye, Bethany. So... What's up? Hey, so mom just got back from shopping at Val's Boutique. Okay. I, I know, just listen. Okay, so um, mom said that Val was talking about zoning and banking and Jamie. Mom didn't understand it, but it sounds like Val could be worth talking to. I mean, you know what a mover and shaker she is. Oh, okay. Got it. shape. Oh, but I see you've let the DC office vibe like throw up all over you, so we're gonna get you out of this X-Files get up and into some jeweled tones to bring out your green eyes and gorgeous hair. So, I guess you heard about Frank Beef here. Oh, wasn't that awful? Poor Jamie. He and I are in the Chamber of Commerce together. I watched it live. Some people at the church food pantry were watching it on the big TV. You know, I heard Frank Bavier's been taking kickbacks to influence his zoning decisions, but somebody recently upped the ante and got him to switch sides. Any idea which side? Hard to tell. Ever since the explosion and the Omni Millennium buyout, more big box stores have been moving in. Hmm. It's gotten harder for us local shops to keep going. Hmm. Makes sense. And to be honest, I don't trust the Brennemans either. <sighs> but at least they're local. The devil you know, you know? <laughs> and those. These? Perfect. Okay, my dear, time to go live. Thanks. Check. 
Hmm. So, how'd you know that Bethany girl again? Uh, we went to high school together. I thought you were homeschooled, James. Well, uh, my mom taught us in elementary school, but we later joined a co-op. Co-op? Basically, the parents would teach subjects they were experts in and uh, even lead some field trips. Was well, that even legal? Mom. <laughs> Many successful people are homeschooled. Olympic athletes, movie stars. I think it shows initiative. Very entrepreneurial, James. But of course we wanted you to go to Lemley Prep School. Like we did, Ellie darling. Yeah, I know, Mom. I'll get it. Oh, uh, hi. Hi. So. I see your mom at the market once in a while. Um, <laughs> she's doing a great job of the place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you bought a house with a dead guy in it. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> every flip house has its surprises, but, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any idea how he got there? Yeah, n no. Uh, the police asked me all about it, but I'm pretty sure they know that I had nothing to do with it, so. I'm in the clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a real mystery. Yeah. So... Um, I think we should talk sometime, if, uh, if that's okay. I think there's some things we need to clear up. Yeah, um, Jamie, maybe we should. Queen and Queen's Bishop 3. Bethany, hi! Hey. Oh, come in, come in! I don't think she can stay. Actually, my mom canceled on me, so I thought I'd take you up on the offer to drop by. Wonderful! Come on in, come on in. Ah, Miss Shanholtz. Welcome. Nice to see you, Mr. Brandeman. Oh, you can call me Walter now that you're all grown up. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. So, last time I talked to your mom at the bank, she said you were working down in D.C. For the government? Yes, sir. I got a little tired of the bureaucracy and decided to move back home for a little while. <laughs> Get some peace and quiet. Well, things around here were quiet until that awful business, James's investment property. Yes, how awful. Did you know him well? We saw him all the time. The country club, the wine festival, and all our parties and barbecues. To be honest, I never really liked the man. But you still invited him to your parties? Well, as the zoning commissioner, Frank was a colleague and one of the town leaders. So it sounds like you did know him. I had a few meetings with Frank on behalf of local businesses. Mostly in an effort to persuade him to keep the town zoned in a way that would preserve the economy of the town. Well, since his murder, people have started to say maybe he was taking bribes to influence his zoning decisions. What are you implying, Bethany? It's okay, James. The young lady has a fair question. In a small town like this, lots of folks do favors for people they do business with. But I assure you that my meetings with Frank were all legal and above board. So, who else was trying to buy the land? Omni Millennium and their foreign investors want to turn all of the farmland, land like your mom's, into warehouses and data centers. Lots of folks think that would be bad for the town. Bad enough to kill over? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Honey. It's okay. My family has been in this town for over a hundred years. This is our community and we solve our problems like neighbors. If you're really interested in this situation, I think you should go talk to the people at Omni Millennium and their real estate agent, Rex McNair. Um, sorry. Curiosity sometimes gets the best of me. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. 
Um, I'm going to let you guys get back to your chess game. Allison, thank you so much for inviting me in. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with me? I was just trying to have a conversation with Walter. Why are you getting so agitated? Do you really think I'd be involved with killers? Do you really think I've changed that much? I didn't say that. But to be honest, I'm not sure how much you've changed, James. Jamie. He can be such a jerk. Well, I always thought he was a gentleman. You know, the kind that every mom wants her daughter to bring home and maybe marry or... Oh, stop, Mom. Jamie, I'm sorry, I mean James and Allison Brandeman look practically engaged. He fits right in at Castle Brandeman and I've got my own life. Like I said before, we both have moved on. It's great to have her home. And she's so grown up. <laughs> Hi. Can I help you? Yes, my name is Bethany Shanholtz, and I was wondering if Rex McNear was available. Um, I have a few questions about a house I heard about. Just a moment, sweetie. <laughs> Rex, get in here! What? I was in a meeting. Please, you were playing online poker on your phone again. And this lady needs to talk to you. I wish I could fire you. But I got half this company in the divorce settlement. Well, at least I got the cat. How dare you mention Mr. Bumpkins? I'm sorry, miss. Uh, let's meet in the conference room. So why don't you have a seat right here? Uh, can I have you a cup of coffee? No, I'm good. So how can I help you? Well, I heard that you used to work with Frank Bavier, and I just moved back into town, and I hate to sound callous. But you wanted to get a great deal on the house, and you figured I was the one selling it. Oh, I like the way you think, young lady. Well, maybe this was a bad idea. I'll, I'll just go. No, no, wait. Yes, I heard about the zoning commissioner's great TV debut. <laughs> Frank was always a grandstander. You didn't get along? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Frank just loved the power he held over the town and the businesses. Did you have problems with him yourself? Problems? No. We just had some professional disagreements. Wow, that, that sounds complicated. Well, you see, I represent Omni Millennium for all their real estate needs in this county. At first, he was dead set against my client's request to rezone the mountain land from agriculture to commercial. So we were at odds. But a few days ago, he let me know quietly that he was reconsidering that position. So I was fine with him. But if I were you, I'd see Branneman or his heir apparent, that wood kid. If Bavier would have changed his mind, they would have lost their shirts. coffee really that difficult? It's three teaspoons of Colombian, five tablespoons of Nicaraguan dark, and four tablespoons of Ethiopian. How many times do I have to tell you that? Your next appointment is here. You know, it's okay. I, I really need to go. Well, if you want to see the house, just let me know. We can get you a great deal. 
Right. Hey, Carl, it's Rex. Yeah, Rex. You asked me to call you if anybody inquired about the Bavier house? Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Does this have anything to do with our friends or uh, the warehouse? I told you. We only talk about that in person, not over the phone. Hey, yeah, okay, so apparently Bavier was siding with Branham and the farmers, but then something changed his mind. So he was gonna side with Omni Millennium? It looks that way. Hector, what about you? It looks like Bavier was doing a lot of emailing back and forth with Carl from the mayor's office. Huh. Looks like Carl was aligning himself with Omni Millennium and quietly taking over the town. But Carl's just an assistant to the mayor. Yeah, but the mayor changes every four years. But Carl has been in that job forever. All right, well, if Carl is our guy, we're gonna have to prove it. Hector, do you have anything else in that squatter that I found? Yeah, boss. A tractor to the church. I'm on it. <sighs> yeah, it's me. This is getting more complicated by the minute. Yes, I know what will happen if this gets out. I'll take care of it. I need you to come with me. It's not safe here. Leave me alone. I don't want your help. Carl, let her go. She saw something she shouldn't have. And now, so have you. I, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> but if Bavier sided with you and Omni Millennium, then why'd you kill him? I finally got him to change his mind about the zoning, but then he grew a conscience and was going to report the whole thing. So now I've got even more of a mess to clean up. Okay. Okay, now you're gonna take me to your car and drive me out of town. Where'd you learn to fight like that? I was homeschooled. What? My physical education included bailing hay and studying Shaolin Kung Fu. Okay, talk. You have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. This is bigger than anything you can imagine. Well, who's behind it? Rex? Brandeman? You don't get it, do you? Brandeman? This town, Mount Hideaway? They're nothing. Nothing compared to the people I work for. Now they'll be after me. Oh, and you too.
So is Angie staying at your house? Um, yes, actually. She doesn't really feel safe, obviously, at the church, and so she's staying in Joy's room. Oh, I bet Joy is thrilled. No, she understands the situation. She actually understands a lot. Excuse me. Well, from what I've been reading from these emails, and from what Carl just ominously said to you, would not surprise me if there was some hidden hand pulling all the strings. Mm. Whoever it is, I gotta hand it to them. You really know how to cover their tracks. Guys, that was the sheriff's department. They were transporting Carl to lock up when a vein of heavily armed men ambushed them. Nobody was hurt, but Carl escaped. We rolled a one, guys. Right, yes, of course, of course, yes. The oh-so-famous real estate mogul is next, and then I'll be able to clean this whole thing up completely, I promise, I... Hello? Hello? So, Angie, how did you sleep? Is it okay if I give him some? Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, watch this. <laughs> He's so cute. Where did you get him? Um, that's actually kind of a long story. Um, I got him when I used to work for the government. I knew someone who couldn't take care of him anymore. Joy, I have a few gift baskets to finish today. Can you come to the market? I was actually gonna stay home today. I have to finish a commission for someone in New York. Oh, well that's okay, sweetie. Can I see it? Yeah, one yes. second. Angie, you think you could give me a hand? <laughs> Beats being here all day. Um, Bethany, will you be there? I have a few errands to run in town first and then I will come by. Are you gonna go after that guy? Here, Mom. I'm not finished yet, but what do you think? Angie, you're gonna be safe from Carl, I promise. The sheriff has people looking for him all around town. If you stay with my mom, you'll be fine. And I'll come over soon too, okay? Okay. <sighs> Rex McNear Real Estate, home of Rex Exceptional Service. How can I help you? No, he's in a meeting right now. Can I have him call you back? That's final. Okay. Another satisfied client, I see. He's not a client. I know who he is. He's that young upstart that's taking all your business. You know, I told you years ago that social media was the way for the future, but no. Well, mind your own business, you old bat. Oh, drop dead. <coughs> oh, God, what? Is it that goofy organic sweetener going down the wrong way? Or is it the cheap whiskey? Rex? Rex? Oh, Rex! Oh, Rex, honey! Oh, my goodness! Oh, Rex! Honey! Oh, oh, oh my goodness! Oh, 911? Yes, 911, we, we have an emergency here at, at, at uh, Rex McNear Real Estate. Come quickly, please! Help! Help! 
Angie doing? Well, she's tough, but she's terrified. And as long as Carl is on the loose, she's going to stay that way. If the sheriff cannot find him, we need to. They've got all the available men out searching for him, but it's a big county. Mm. And, you know, we don't even know. He might have left the area altogether. Well, the town doesn't have any traffic cameras because there's only a few stoplights. But I did manage to see a blur of a white van speeding past an ATM machine after the escape. Ah, uh, it's not much to go on. It's the best I got right now. Guys, that was the sheriff's department. There's been another suspicious death. That's two murders in less than a week. Who is it? Rex McNear, the real estate guy. Rex? I was just there asking him about the zoning thing. I guess Carl's back in town. Well, we can't jump to conclusions until we see the evidence, but I'll let you guys know what I find when I process the crime scene. True. Besides, it would not surprise me if that lady at the front desk had something to do with that. One second. Yeah, she always scared me. Hey, Mom, I'm fine. OK, smarty pants. I'm actually calling because I wanted to see if you were going to be able to go by Val's boutique today and ask her about those gift baskets. You know, it's not really the greatest. Oh, actually, you know what, Mom? That is a good idea. Thanks. Oh, OK, great. Thanks, honey. Love you. Love you too, Mom. Bye. OK. Yes? Well, uh, my mom needs me to drop by Val's to take orders for gift baskets. But so. what about the hunt for Carl? Well, Val seems to know everything in this town, so she's not a bad place to start. Okay. <laughs> so, tell me again what happened to your husband? ex-husband. I divorced him three years ago for being an ignorant, pig-faced nincompoop. But you were still working here. Well, I got half the real estate business in the settlement. I needed to stay here to make sure he didn't wreck it. I see. So tell me again what happened. Well, he came out here being obnoxious as usual, and he was drinking his coffee out of that stupid mug. Coffee? Who made the coffee? Well, I did, of course. I made the coffee, I answered the phones, I scheduled the termite inspectors. Did he come out here for a particular reason? Well, he had just been having a meeting with that James Wood kid, and he came in here to get his messages, and we got into a fight as usual. And I told him to drop dead. And he did. <laughs> it's the first time he ever did anything I told him to without me having to repeat it a hundred times. Bethany, I will be with you in just one minute. No worries, Val, I'm just looking around. That is quite the setup, though. Well, yeah. Gotta keep fresh photos on the online store and on social media. I'm doing a live stream later today. Wow. Hey, oh, my mom mentioned that you might want some gift baskets. Oh, yeah. My ladies love the ones with peach preserves and local raw honey. Mm -hmm. Ever since I did a segment on my YouTube channel about local unfiltered honey, poof, been selling like hotcakes. Oh. And actually, while I have you here, you need to go try this on. No, I... Go upstairs, try that on. Excuse me? Do you have this in a smaller size? Yes. I'll be right with you. Great, thanks. I will be one minute. Go upstairs and try that on. Okay. Bye. Go. Bye. Yes. <laughs> Do you know anyone that would want to hurt your husband? I I'm sorry, ex-husband? Everybody who ever knew him, at least lately, 
He used to be the town favorite. I mean, we had it all. And then a few years ago, he started to change. Change? Well, yes. He was secretive and stressed, and, and he'd go out drinking and gambling. <laughs> Called it networking. Said it was good for the business. <sighs> well, and finally, I divorced him. But I stayed here to keep an eye on the business. I guess he still was hiding things from me. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Amy, what's up? Hey, Beth. I'm still at the crime scene. It looks like Rex was poisoned. I'm taking his mug to the lab now for processing. Anything else? Just that it looks really bad for Teresa. She made the coffee that poisoned him, and she gets the whole business now that he's gone. Sheriff is coming. Gotta go. Oh, now those are your colors. That's what I'm talking about. And the outfit, amazing. So smile because it's going on the website. So was Teresa McNear one of your customers? Yes, she was. Oh my goodness, that poor lady. Oh, so you already know about Rex. Of course you do. Do you think she did it? No way. They fought like cats and dogs, but deep down, they really loved each other. She was sitting here once a week buying a new outfit. You could see it on her face when she was trying on a dress. He really was her world. Wait, but doesn't she get the whole brokerage now that he's gone? Well, in the first place, a brokerage without a real estate agent isn't worth much. And Rex built that practice from all his good old boy relationships. Of course. Some of those good old boy relationships weren't so good. Hmm. Anybody dangerous? Not that I know of. Although, Rex did have a provision in his will that if he got murdered, his half of the business would get somebody else. What? Yeah. I don't know if he was really afraid of her or if he just put that in there to get her goat. Well, then... Who gets the brokerage now that he's gone? I don't know. What? I don't know everything. Shanholes, I can help you. Any word on finding Carl Corso? We have all available resources on the case. We don't need any help. Oh, I wasn't offering. But it does sound like your department's got its hands full. If you're talking about the Rex McNear case, that one's open and shut. The wife was the only one in the room at the time, she made the coffee, and she gets the whole business now that he's gone. You sure about that? Excuse me? I heard a rumor that Rex named somebody else in his will to get his part of the business in the case of murder. But of course that's just hearsay. You know, for somebody who just came back here, you sure do seem to know a lot about other people's business. Just a small town girl, living in a lonely world. All right, we may check that out later. But Miss Shanholz? Yes? If you interfere with my investigation, I will not hesitate to charge you with obstruction of justice. Did you grow up here? Uh, yeah, my great-grandfather started this orchard back in the 1800s. Have you always done this whole farming thing? As a matter of fact, no. I have degrees in linguistics and political science. And for 10 years, I worked up at the Mount Hideaway facility. So you were a spy or something? Some folks up there do some pretty classified work, but no, I was never a spy. Uh, 
Bethany told me that you used to homeschool her and her sister? Yeah, their dad was special forces and we moved around a lot. And both the girls are exceptional, each in their own way. And well, we just felt like it was the best decision for our family. I really liked public school. Um, I was an honor student, college bound. Um, I even had a few scholarships lined up. But then the explosion happened and uh, I missed weeks of school because social services was always taking me from family to group home. And I never really caught back up. Hi. Can I help you find something? Um, maybe. I'm actually looking for pie pans and baking tins. You know, you might want to try these cast iron ones. Cast iron? Yes. They conduct the heat nice and evenly and they're kind of indestructible. You've been talking to my mom again, haven't you? <laughs> Hey Amy, what's up? So I finished processing the poison that killed Rex and somebody put cyanide in that organic sweetener he uses. Cyanide? That's nasty. The killer must have noticed that lots of people drink coffee, but of course only Rex used that sweetener. There's more. The cyanide was made from apple seeds. I mean, I know that apple seeds contain a tiny amount of cyanide, but you'd need 20 or more apple seeds to kill someone. And on top of that, apricot seeds are actually much better for creating poison from a fruit. I mean, sheesh, Amy, your dad taught us that in criminal science class. Exactly. There was a fair amount of residue in the mix, so I was even able to determine the type of apple that was used. That's why I'm calling. Okay, shoot. It's a relatively uncommon variety of apple called the Newtown Pippin. A semi-tart apple that was originally grown by President Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, my mom's the only orchard in town that actually grows them. Oh, oh no. I know Beth, and so does the sheriff. He's probably on his way right now to talk to your mom and ask how apples from her orchard got turned into the poison that killed Rex. What is he doing here? I don't know, maybe he caught the guy. I doubt it. Good afternoon, Ms. Shanholtz. Good afternoon, Sheriff. Uh, so did you find the guy who tried to kill my daughter? <laughs> the investigation is ongoing. So what are you doing here? Well, I understand you grow a rare variety of apples here called a Newtown Pippin. Yeah, we're the only farm that grows them. And why is it that you're the only orchard in the area that grows them? Well, they're a little tricky to care for, but we do have a buyer up north that uses them to make hard cider. Sheriff, I'm a little confused as to why you're here asking me about apples when there's a killer on the loose. There's no need to get agitated, Miss Shantle. What's going on here? Nothing that concerns you, Miss Shanholtz. You're on my property talking to my mother about our family business. We've determined that Rex McNear was poisoned using apples from this orchard. Which one of you would care to explain that? Uh, wait, I had two truckloads of Newtown Pippin apples go missing several days ago. Two truckloads of apples just disappeared. I don't seem to recall you reporting them stolen. No. I didn't. Ever since Omni Millennium took over the trucking company, service has gone downhill. It's not uncommon for shipments to get delayed or even lost. Besides, there are easier ways to poison someone than making cyanide from apple seeds. 
Well, that is, of course, unless you just have them lying around at your disposal. Okay, that's enough, Sheriff. First of all, my mother neither had motive, means, nor opportunity to kill Rex McNear. And secondly, it actually only takes about 20 apple seeds to kill someone with cyanide. So why in the world would we lose two truckloads if we could just go to the warehouse in the back and get some more? Anyway, isn't it true that you were at McNear's office just yesterday? Care to explain what that was about? I had some real estate questions and he answered them. But I certainly wouldn't have gone and killed someone I'd never met before. Oh, well, you just seem to have an answer for everything, don't oh. you? Well, you seem to have one or more murderers on the loose. Sheriff, I think we've given you a reasonable explanation as to where those apples may have come from. So if you don't have any further questions, we have work to do. Bethany, over here. What? I think I can help. I have camped in a bunch of different spots around town. After I aged out of the foster care system, I needed to in order to survive. Now I just do it to find useful things. Okay, um... That's great, but how does this correlate to what we were just talking about? So, there's this warehouse on Water Street, near the railroad, and nobody knows who owns it. That never happens in a small town, because everybody knows everybody. So anyway, I was camping out there about a week ago, and these two big trucks came in. I got closer to them, thinking that there could be something valuable, but it was full of apples. Right? So I slipped out of the warehouse and into the woods, and as I was leaving, I heard this mechanical noise. I smelled this really chemically smell. I began to doze off, but when I woke up, everything was empty. I honestly wrote it off as some sort of weird dream. Where did you say that was again? Water Street, near the railroad. I, I can show you. No, <laughs> Angie, it's okay. I'll pop by and tell the sheriff later. Thank you. Okay, so she said it was a warehouse on Water Street near a railroad, mm -hmm. but nobody knows the owner. Okay. Say no more. I shall find it. All right. Uh, see here. Okay, Water Street. Yep, yep, here it is. All right, it is owned by a string of shell companies within shell companies. You know, like one of those little Russian dolls. What? Well, the dolls that like they fit inside. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll look around for her. What's up, boss? That was my mom. Angie disappeared. You don't think Carl could have gotten to her, do you? No, but I know what he'd do if he found her. Bethany, 
This obviously has to do with that guy that tried to kill us. And I can't stay at home shoveling cow dung in the barn. What are you doing here? Looking for you. My mom called me worried sick. Look, let's go someplace and talk. Wait, wait. This real estate guy's card is everywhere. That has to be a clue. Angie, get in the car. Dad operated the forklift at the factory. Um, Mom worked as a librarian part-time. It was a Friday afternoon, and Mom was dropping by to get Dad's paycheck. I was 12, and Joy was four. Amy and I were playing Clue in the barn. It was, it was like her secret fort. We loved playing Clue there. The doorbell rang, and I rigged a second bell to ring in the barn. I thought it was a UPS man or my mom. Definitely wasn't expecting two soldiers in uniform. There's so much I wish I could have said or done differently. Have you? Ever done anything you regretted, Bethany? Yes. Something's different this time. I feel it in my bones. They. They know something that we aren't catching. Everything is going to be fine. Just go to your desk as usual, copy the files, and then use the dead drop like we always do. What if they find out? They're not going to find out. As soon as we verify the information that you're providing, my superiors will send you and your family to a safe house, and then you'll be relocated to a whole new life. You can do this. Your family is counting on you. Hey, Bethany, are you okay? Yeah, sorry. So, I don't know why these things happened to us. And I don't know why bad things happen to good people, but I know that you're here for a reason, and you have to believe that. I don't know what I believe, but it's nice of you and your mom to let me bunk with you guys. <laughs> well, why don't you stay the next time, okay? My mom is the kindest woman in the world, but trust me, you do not want to get on her bad side. Mm hmm So I went to the warehouse and he had business cards all over the place. That's weird. Oh, Amy, there's something in the muck. <laughs> oh, that's Hazel. She's nocturnal, so she likes to curl up in her mug during the day. Oh. Oh, oh I know. Oh, hello. Hello. Say hi. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, can I hold her? Sure. Mm -hmm. She is adorable. I know. So why would Rex McNear be wallpapering a creepy warehouse with business cards? Well, it sounds like he was trying really hard to talk to the owner. Yeah, but nobody knows who owns this place. Maybe someone's trying to keep it that way. Oh, it's the sheriff's office. They opened the will. Oh, finally. Okay, tell me. What disreputable lowlife got half of Rex's business in the will? Oh, tell me it was Carl. That would make this really easy. The remainder of Rex's ownership in the brokerage is deeded to Jamie Wood. What? Why would he leave his...
his business to his biggest competitor. That doesn't make any sense. No, actually it does. <sighs> Jamie was the second biggest agent in town. So leaving the business to him was actually the best way to take care of Teresa and the brokerage. Oh. Well, you might be right, but the sheriff put that together with the fact that Jamie and Rex were arguing right before Rex died. Oh no. Bethany, the sheriff is arresting Jamie for Rex's murder. <sighs> Miss Branneman, please step aside. Can you? Hey, Allison's gonna be okay. All What's right. What's going on, Sheriff? This is a mistake. No, I don't think that it is. He was the last person to see McNair, other than the wife. He has means and opportunity. Oh, and thanks to you, we now know his motive. What? No, no, no. It's really, not, Bethany? No, 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 no. Do you really not, think I'm still guilty? No. What? what a, Bethany, what hey, is he talking about? Bethany, Bethany, what'd you say? I thought you were his friend. No, I am his friend. <laughs> I, don't worry, James. I'll call Daddy. He'll call his lawyer, and we will fix this. You, you just stay away from my family. No, stay away. Allison, he's just trying to help. Guys, I really think that we can do this. Everybody in the town says that our dad is responsible for the explosion that killed those workers. How can we fight that? By proving that he didn't do it. We know somebody set him up to take the fall and, well, there must be evidence somewhere. We're just high school kids. We can't do anything. No, but that's the point. You see, nobody's gonna be paying attention to us. And Amy can help. Her dad works at the police station and she hears stuff. Leave our family alone, Bethany. Rose. We've been through enough. Rose, we are family. You know that. Rose, I'm gonna find a way to clear Dad's name. And Bethany's gonna help me, even if you won't. Fine, just keep me out of it. Rose! Hey, let her go. We got this. So they just arrested him? Yep. But we know he didn't do it. I'm sure they'll figure it out. I don't know, Mom. You've talked to the sheriff. He gets one idea and he just runs with it. You're right. He's not all that bright. Joy. <laughs> what? So, Angie, did you learn a lesson about getting on Mom's bad side? I learned that there are rules that I cannot break in your family apparently, and if I do, I'm left shoveling cow dung in the barn. Ah, correct you are. Pick up dung, you will. <laughs> Yoda, really? Manure duty is just the beginning of your path. Listen to her, you will. Or you will face the wrath of mom's duck so. <laughs> so the sheriff says he has enough evidence to go forward with the trial. He thinks Jamie knew about the will, but was afraid Rex was gonna cut him out because of whatever they were arguing about. That's ridiculous. I've been going through the county's real estate records for the past five years. Woods' business was steadily growing while Rex's was decreasing. So Jamie didn't need to inherit Rex's business, he was already taking it. <sighs> There's something we're missing here. Did anybody look at Rex's computer? No, Teresa didn't know the password and the sheriff doesn't have anybody here that can crack it. Hector, can you get me into Rex's computer? <laughs> Did Han cheat first? Ah! Okay, I'll head over there as soon as it gets dark. Okay, all the alarms are disabled. Okay, great. Ah. Oh, ow! What was that? Okay, it looks like something in there is giving off a weird Wi-Fi or Bluetooth signal. It's jamming our comms. What do I do? Try looking around the room. See when it gets worse. Uh. 
Oh my gosh. Rex hid a secret camera in his conference room. Well, it must have been a cheap one that he bought online. How rude. If he would have bought that from me, it would never have given off such a leaky signal. But see, that's just it. People are afraid to buy local. If people could just get over that and get to the fact that it's genuine quality. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I found a microphone too. So what do you think he was using the cameras for? Recording meetings without permission is highly illegal, so I guess it's blackmail. Or insurance. Well, the cameras were recording everything wirelessly. So all that footage should probably be on the laptop. Okay. I'll take it upstairs and copy it. I'll be back in a second. Copy that, boss. Did you see what I did there? Let's copy that. You know, control C and the Bethany. So she hung up on me. Tell it to the judge. Who's gonna feed my snakes? So, as you can clearly see, James never went near Rex McNear's coffee or his sweeteners. And tell me again, why did you return to a crime scene that you had already processed? Well, um, I, I just had a feeling that I might have forgotten something, so I went back and I found this. You just had a feeling? Look, I grew up with Jamie. I know he's innocent. Look, you're right, this doesn't show him doing anything. But it also doesn't prove that he didn't go back and put the poison in some other time. What? But look, but... look, thank you for your diligence. But James is staying in jail. Sorry the sheriff didn't buy your story back there. Yeah, me too. I don't think he's being reasonable. Hey, but it was pretty smart of you to find those hidden cameras in Rex's office. Thanks, Travis. I just wish I'd found him sooner. Was there any more footage? No, that was all from the morning of the murder, but Hector has the hard drives back at his computer shop since we don't have the equipment here to decrypt them. Hector, huh? The guy that wears glasses, dresses up like a hobbit for Halloween? Yeah. Hey, you know I took a forensic science class once. Hey, I just heard there's a hidden camera in Rex McNear's office. Yeah, the file they have is just from today. The hard drive is at the computer repair shop on Main Street. downloaded those video files, how far back did you go? Okay, I'll be right over. For the last time, Rex, they do not want to purchase that warehouse. They want you to stop looking into it. I know what I'm doing. I'm telling you that you're in over your head. I know what this town thinks of me. I know what Teresa thinks of me. Well, I'm going to make this deal and show them that I still got it. Zoom in there? Uh, yeah. I'm zooming. <sighs> Yahtzee! Carl Corso putting the poison in Rex McNair's coffee sweetener. We got him dead to rights! All right, I'll call Amy and have her find this footage and send it to the sheriff. Oh, good. No, I don't think you will. Oh, Carl, put the gun down. It's over. Over? It'll be over when I shoot the two of you and burn this place to the ground.
Seriously, again with the gun? Yeah, again. Nice. Put your hands up. Put your hands up! I'm sitting there, we're watching the video, right? And then unbeknownst to us all, Carl, he's coming in from behind. He's got his gun ready. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't hesitate. I reached over, I pushed the button, I fired the tank. They said video games wouldn't help my accuracy. They were wrong. It was like rolling a natural 20 in real life. It fired it. Okay, okay. Okay, so it does look like Carl and Rex are working together, but I'm getting really frustrated that Carl keeps getting away. Well, he's probably long gone by now. Do you think we're ever gonna find Carl? I don't know. He's either skipped town or he's planning something much worse. Either way, I've got my work cut out for me. You mean we've got our work cut out for us. Amy, are you sure you wanna do this? Don't even start with that. This is my town too. And Bethany, I'm in this all the way. And Hector? Yep, and Hector. All right, well. In that case, let's just make sure that we keep this in between us. Agreed. So, how are you doing? No. Really, Amy, I'm okay. I came back knowing I would have to face Jamie and face the responsibility that I feel for Rose's death. And? And if this adventure and my time at the agency has taught me anything, it's that there are so many things that I just can't control. People make their own choices for their own reasons. My choice is to stay here and protect my town and my family. And Jamie, he has a really sweet girlfriend and a sweet life. And I'm genuinely happy for him. And as for Rose, She made her choice. And I don't know if I'll ever stop grieving for her. But I think it's time for both of us to rest in peace. Are you sure this is deep enough? Oh, that's perfect. Carl was pretty skinny. <laughs> and he shouldn't be here for long. Hmm. So you think somebody's gonna find this pretty soon? Oh, I'm sure of it. The peaches will be ripe in about a week and the pickers will be all over this spot. Yep, they'll find Carl buried right here and then the real fun will begin. You seem to know a lot about this place. I should. This is my hometown too.